Lord, may the words in my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Christian author Diana Butler Bass recently posed an interesting question in light of Holy Week and Easter. And the question was this, what if the table is more important than the cross? What if the table is more important than the cross? Now I know for some of you this question may seem shocking. How can you even propose such a thing? How could you say that the table is more important than the cross? And I'm sure the internet trolls on our live stream today will probably give me a hard time for even just mentioning this question. How can you propose such a thing? Because as Protestant Christians, the cross is very central to our faith and to our theology. As Protestant Christians, every Holy Week, we celebrate Good Friday. and Jesus' death on the cross as one of the most significant days of the entire year. In fact, you might even say that we have freeze-framed the life of Jesus to the moment of the cross. And the cross has become the predominant symbol of our faith and our theology, a symbol that is found in our churches and in our artwork and maybe even hanging around your neck in the form of jewelry. Yes, the cross is central to our faith and to our theology, yet in her questioning, Diana Butler Bass invites us to also consider the importance of the table. Specifically, to consider the importance of the table in light of the events of Holy Week and Easter. Because if you go back and look at the scripture, you can see that the events of Holy Week and Easter begin and end at the table. For example, on Monday, Thursday, Jesus and the disciples were in Jerusalem with friends and family at a big, busy, bustling holiday meal where they were commemorating Passover, the celebration of God freeing their ancestors from slavery. And it's at that table that Jesus takes bread and blesses it and breaks it and says, this is my body that is broken for you. And this meal at the table took place immediately before Jesus' arrest, trial, and crucifixion. And then immediately after the resurrection on the third day, after the disciples have visited that empty tomb, our story today reminds us that Jesus is again found at the table. In our story today from the Gospel of Luke, the very next thing that happens after the resurrection is that Jesus is walking with the disciples on the road to Emmaus, and he's invited into their home to sit at their table. And once again, surrounded by friends and family, Jesus takes the bread, blesses it, breaks it, And it's in the breaking of that bread that those around the table recognize the risen Christ in their midst. Yes, the events of Holy Week look something like this. Table, trial, cross, tomb, table. Holy Week and Easter both begin and end at the table. But more than just these two stories, what we know about Jesus' life in total is that the table was really important to Jesus. If you look back through the Gospels, many of the stories of Jesus' life take place around a table, or while distributing food, or when inviting people over to supper. Indeed, some have suggested that Jesus' primary work was organizing suppers as a way to embody the coming kingdom of God. Throughout his ministry, Jesus welcomed everyone to the point of contention with his critics to the table. Tax collectors, sinners, women, Gentiles, the poor, faithful Jews, and less faithful Jews. Everyone was invited to the table, just like everyone is invited to the kingdom of God. In fact, Diana Butler Bass writes, 
that Jesus was sloppy with his supper invitations. He never thought about who would be seated next to whom. He made the disciples crazy with his lax ideas about dinner parties. And all he wanted was for everyone to come to the table and to share food and conversation with one another. Indeed, the table was a central part of Jesus' life and ministry. And in addition to this, Diana Butler Bass also points out that after the resurrection, that the risen Christ never returns to the cross. She writes that Jesus never takes the disciples back to the site of his execution. He never gathers his followers at Calvary. He never points to the blood-stained hill and never instructs them to meet him there. He never valorizes the events of Friday, never even mentions them. Yes, there are still wounds in his hands and his feet and his side, but he doesn't mention how he got them. Instead, almost all of the post-resurrection stories and appearances take place at tables or around a meal or in the upper room where the disciples had that holy last supper. Table, trial, cross, tomb, table. Clearly, there is something important about the table in the life and ministry of Jesus. And while personally, I'm not quite sure I'm ready to give up the cross, I'm not quite sure I'm ready to say the table is more important than the cross, I do think that Diana Butler Bass makes a good point here. And I do think her question is important for us to consider, especially when we think about what we should be doing as Christians today. Because what we see Jesus doing immediately after the resurrection is to gather with people around a table. The very next thing that happens after the resurrection, and not just in this story, but in several different stories, is that Jesus breaks bread and cooks breakfast, and shares a meal with those that he loves. What happens after Easter is Jesus continues to organize suppers as a way to embody the coming kingdom of God. And so as we ask ourselves what comes next for us after Easter, what are we supposed to be doing as followers of the risen Christ? I think we too are invited to gather around the table, to cook breakfast and share a meal with those that we love, to organize suppers and create spaces where everyone can come just as they are, to pull up a chair and invite others to the feast. Like Jesus, we too are called to be sloppy with our dinner invitations to invite everyone to the table, to take what we have and to bless it and break it and share it with those around us, to celebrate God's abundant love of God, the abundant love of God that is blessed, broken, and freely shared with the world. As followers of the risen Christ, we are called to the table. In fact, I think we are called to be the table to be the table of God's abundant love for all people in the world. In fact, as I was thinking about this this week and preparing for this sermon, I was reminded of something our dear Betty Bricky used to say to me before she died. She used to say to me, if you want to come to this church, you have to love everyone. If you want to come to this church, you have to love everyone. And if you want to come to this table, you also have to love everyone. And in that way, perhaps the symbol of the table and the symbol of the cross are not that different after all. Perhaps the symbol of the table and the symbol of the cross have more in common than we might think. Because at the heart of both of these symbols is God's deep and abundant love for us. God's grace that comes without price, 
God's bread that comes without cost, God's love that is freely given to all people. What comes next after Easter? What are we called to do as people of the resurrection? Well, if we take the role of the table seriously in Jesus' life and ministry, then I think we too are called to be people who gather at the table. People who do the work of setting God's table for all people. And who continue to organize suppers and feed the world with both the physical and the spiritual bread of Christ. For what the story of the road to Emmaus reminds us, what this third story or this third word, third next word of the resurrection tells us, is that Jesus gathered around a table, took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and in doing so was recognized as the risen Christ. And because of this, we too continue to break bread together. We too continue to organize kingdom suppers where everyone is welcome. We too continue to be sloppy with our dinner invitations and generous with our love. We too continue to gather around the table and invite everyone to the feast no matter the cost. For even though the cross is central to our life of faith, We cannot deny that the risen Christ showed up to the disciples on the road to Emmaus, not at the cross, but rather in the breaking of the bread. And it might just be in the breaking of the bread, in the gathering at the table, in the welcoming of all God's creation, and in that practice of loving everyone, that we too will experience the presence of the resurrected Christ right here in our midst. May it be so. Amen.